People often ask us what we thought about Ottawa, the capital of Canada and the city we called home for about a year and a half. Our honest answer is always that it's complicated. We find Ottawa both underrated and frustrating at the same time. Now that we've moved away, we thought we'd let you in on the good and the bad of our experiences in Canada's capital from an urbanist's perspective. Let's start with the bad. What really frustrated us in our last few months there and made us excited to leave? Being a pedestrian in Ottawa kind of sucks. We encountered major infractions with aggressive or careless drivers on a regular basis, from not stopping at stop signs to almost turning into pedestrians and even running red lights. Drivers in other cities are hardly saints, but brazenly ignoring red lights never felt like something we had to watch for before Ottawa. We saw it happen three or four times at this intersection alone in our last few months there. Here's a video someone posted on Reddit of two cars blatantly running a red light in Ottawa at the same time. It just puts you on edge and degrades the experience of moving around the city when you can't expect people operating deadly machinery to necessarily follow basic rules and decency. It feels like an overbuilt road network for the size of the city encourages drivers to treat city driving like highway driving. Maybe the lower volume of pedestrians in Ottawa makes us easier to ignore, but we're not even talking about the suburbs here. This is mostly in the central city. Places like King Edward, Rideau Street, the Pretoria Bridge, anywhere around the literal highway that cuts through the middle of the city, the Vanier Parkway, Bronson, Carling, and Scott Street. So many places in Ottawa feel fundamentally hostile to your existence as a pedestrian. If the pedestrian experience is a weak point of Ottawa, the cycling experience is a strong point. Ottawa has some good on-street bike lanes like Laurier and Main Street, but they don't exactly form a network on their own. What really makes Ottawa stand out is the excellent system of multi-use pathways that let you opt out of the road network. Originally designed for tourism and recreation along the city's waterways, there are also useful connections between neighborhoods. Whether you live in the Glebe and work at Tunney's Pasture, you're a student at Carleton taking classes at the other university in town, or you live across the river in Gatineau and you want to buy some winter boots at the train yards mall. Pedestrians and cyclists are mixed in a way that isn't totally ideal, But in return, you get consistent routes covering good distance with serious separation from cars. To be clear, not all neighborhoods or trips are served by them. But if you're lucky enough that yours is, you're almost guaranteed a pretty good cycling experience, at least outside of winter when some of them are turned into ski trails. Sometimes the pathways are useful for pedestrians too, especially the recently built pedestrian bridges, but they really shine for medium distance trips by bike. They even reach into some suburbs decently well. Overall, Ottawa feels like it's closer to being a cycling city than a pedestrian-friendly city. When you consider the usefulness of the multi-use path system, the fact that places you need to go tend to be a little further away than they are in a denser city like Toronto or Montreal, and Ottawa's unique progress on things like protected bike intersections, which we covered in a past video. And then there's transit. We're still not sure what to make of Ottawa's transit. It's surprisingly successful, and kind of a disaster. Not many people realize this, but Ottawa's transit ridership is actually really high for a mid-sized and pretty suburban North American city. Before the pandemic, 18% of commuters in the entire Ottawa-Gatineau metro area got to work by transit. That's crazy for a city that mostly looks like this. Since the pandemic, transit commuting is down to 10%, but that's still a bit higher than Calgary, the most comparably sized city in Canada and it's leaps and bounds ahead of the two most comparably sized metro areas in the U.S., Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Raleigh, North Carolina, where only 1-2% of commuters take transit. Canadian cities just tend to provide more frequent and usable bus service than their U.S. counterparts, but Ottawa goes beyond that with the Transitway, a pretty nifty bus rapid transit system that allows buses to opt out of traffic with bus-only roads and lanes. The transit way is now gradually being replaced by the O-Train, a light rail system that actually has pretty exciting fundamentals. In much of North America, light rail means a train that runs every 10, 15, or even 20 minutes and gets stuck in traffic with cars. We just happen to have shots of Kitchener-Waterloo here, but it's hardly the worst offender. Ottawa's O-Train, on the other hand, runs every 5 minutes for most of the day and is completely grade-separated and immune to traffic. Especially after the ongoing expansions, 
The O train will be closer to the league of actual metro systems than to the streetcar-like systems that get called light rail in North America. However, and everyone who knows the city will know what's coming, Ottawa's three-year-old train system has been absolutely plagued with technical problems and outages, sometimes lasting for weeks, with shuttle buses struggling to fill in for the much faster and higher capacity train. Just before we left, the train was down for five days because of ice accumulation on the overhead wires. Weather is just one of many causes of outages, on top of maintenance and construction issues. The failures of an otherwise pretty exciting train system have really done a lot to tarnish the reputation of transit in Ottawa. Arguing for a more transit-focused city is much more difficult when people's experience of transit is so unreliable. What's worse, the bus network was reconfigured to feed into the O-Train. This makes sense, but it means that when the train is down, people miss their old express bus routes even more. We like dense, lively, mixed-use neighborhoods, and if you're watching this channel, there's a good chance you do too. This generally means pre-World War II pedestrian-oriented neighborhoods and streetcar suburbs. If you watched our video on coming back to Montreal, you'll know that this was one of the reasons we moved back. Montreal is just unparalleled in Canada for its pedestrian-oriented central city. Ottawa has neighborhoods with many comparable features, but we found it hard to get everything we wanted in one place. When choosing where to live, we're looking for maybe five main things. We'd like to live on a quieter residential street without the noise and stress of too much car traffic. Close to interesting things like quality parks and lively commercial streets, with convenient walking access to basic needs, we also want good transportation connections, especially bike infrastructure and rapid transit, like a metro, subway, or O-train station. Some people will say that's a lot to ask for, but it's actually not that hard to find all of those things at once in Montreal. In Ottawa, it's more difficult. For one, grocery store coverage isn't as good as in denser cities, so there are places even in central Ottawa where you don't have convenient walking access. And the O-Train doesn't cover the central city as well as you might expect. It goes along the edges of neighborhoods and by the highway more than through neighborhoods, like the Montreal Metro or Toronto Subway do. There are good reasons for the route, but it does make it harder to live within walking distance of a station. One area where Ottawa really excels, though, is nature and active recreation. We can talk about Gatineau Park, the Experimental Farm, or the Arboretum. But much of Ottawa's strength here comes down to the rivers and canals. Skating the 8km Rideau Canal is a genuinely unique experience, and the abundant multi-use pathways make Ottawa really good for day trips by bike. Boating, canoeing, and paddling are also very accessible. And one of the biggest surprises for us was how strong Ottawa is for beach access. They're very easy to get to by bike, which is wonderful for families. Even though we recently moved away, we're actually going to end this video by making the case for Ottawa from an urbanism perspective. Canada has three superstar cities, the metro areas that urbanist channels like ours talk about the most, the ones with the biggest and densest pre-war central cities, and the most extensive public transit networks, and other urban amenities. But two of these cities, Toronto and Vancouver, have completely failed on housing affordability, and the other one, Montreal, has a mainly French-speaking job market. This means that the big three cities just aren't accessible to a big slice of the population. When you dig into the numbers, the most practical cities in Canada, financially speaking, are Calgary, Edmonton, and Ottawa. They have the highest median incomes in the country, higher than Toronto, Vancouver, and Montreal, while having less insanely inflated housing. And as mid-sized cities, they're also only one step down in terms of the size of the job market. We're not going to cover Calgary or Edmonton in this video, but the urbanist case for Ottawa is that it's a relatively financially accessible city that still offers above-average urban amenities and options for urbanist lifestyles. It's not always seamless, it's not usually the default, and you have to be more careful about where you live. But Ottawa is not a place to write off from an urbanism perspective. If you want most things within easy walking distance, Centertown and the Glebe work pretty well. If you want good train and cycling connections, there's Hintonburg or Sandy Hill. And if you prefer or need to live in the suburbs, transit access there is better than average in North America, and improving with the O-Train expansions and even transit-oriented development on the way. 
Ottawa has the challenge of being right between Canada's two biggest cities, and that leads to a lot of comparisons. It leads people to hold Ottawa to a higher standard, and we don't think that's entirely a bad thing. But when you take a step back, most North American cities don't have urban rail transit with respectable 5-minute frequencies. Most cities don't have a pretty good system of multi-use pathways that make many cycling commutes safe and practical. And a lot of cities don't have the same housing diversity that you find in central Ottawa and even many of its suburban areas. And that is our honest opinion of Ottawa, after living there for a year and a half. It's a city that's both underrated and deeply frustrating at the same time. Thanks for watching through to the end of the video. Don't forget to bike and subscribe. And a special thanks to our supporters on Patreon.